Hello everyone. For my electroacoustic project, I chose to research Karl Heinz Stockhausen's electronic piece, Hymnen. It was composed and realized in 1966, and many music historians consider Hymnen to be one of the most influential and innovative electroacoustic works of the 20th century. Hymnen is an amalgamation of national anthems and hymns from all over the world. Stockhausen's childhood was during the height of World War II, so as you can imagine, similarly to other composers in this time, his life was severely affected by the events and aftermath of the war. Stockhausen's desire to deliver a message of unity for humanity permeates the piece and is evident even by simply observing the size and scope of this work alone. Karl Heinz Stockhausen was born in 1928 uh, in a small town near Cologne, Germany. Stockhausen was born into an impoverished family, and his early life saw its share of tragedy and loss, as his mother, father, and brother all died during World War II. An orphan by the age of 17, Stockhausen worked through poverty to earn his education and eventually enrolled at Cologne University, where he continued his education in musicology, philosophy, and philology. Through his years of study, he was a common collaborator on West German Radio, or WDR, giving presentations of musical analysis, and finally in 1953 he became a permanent collaborator as part of the Studio for Electronic Music. Now Stockhausen quotes many different influences, but four particular individuals seem to have played part in Hymnen's conception. Frank Martin is worth noting briefly. In 1950, Martin was ultimately the one to admit Stockhausen to Cologne University. After attending the Darmstadt summer courses in 1951, Messiaen and Mio made such an impression on Stockhausen that he traveled to Paris in 1952 to continue study with them. While in Paris, Stockhausen also had a variety of experiences among the students at the conservatoire. He roomed with a Turkish mathematics student and conversed with students from around the globe on a daily basis. In addition to this wide exposure of cultures and languages, he worked in the studio for music concrete at the Paris Conservatoire and would analyze the sounds of everyday materials, speech, wood, glass, metal, and would conduct experiments to recreate their acoustical properties electronically. These two experiences seem to fit right into the goal of Hymnen and may have laid the foundation for the work. Lastly, his work with Dr. Herbert Eimert at WDR played a crucial role in becoming a permanent collaborator at the studio. Dr. Eimert was the artistic director for the studio and had invested in Stockhausen's scholarship and composition while Stockhausen was at Cologne University. This gave Stockhausen the platform he needed to broadcast his pieces, which eventually propelled Stockhausen into international fame. Now, Dr. Eimert eventually turned directorship of WDR over to Stockhausen, and that's when the studio commissioned Hymnen. Stockhausen had been conceiving a large work of electronic, vocal, and instrumental music that would symbolically unify all countries of the world using their national anthems, and finally had the opportunity to realize the work. Stockhausen originally envisioned Hymnen as a sequel to Kontakt. He hoped to use live musicians during the performance with many elements of indeterminacy, although that idea was eventually abandoned. He did complete another version of Hymnen several years later, using only Region 3 and adding a live orchestra to the recorded work. But for our purposes here today, I'm only going to focus on the electronic version. Stockhausen thought the national anthem, or the hymn, was the best form of found material for this, for, for this vision. For one thing, he concluded that national anthems are loaded with time and history, the past, present, and future all in one song. The familiarity of national anthems was also appealing, as the listener is encouraged to listen to how the sound is being transformed, <clears throat> as opposed to trying to listen to what the song is. Stockhausen began collecting recordings of anthems as early as 1964. Now, out of the 195 countries of the world, he had collected anthems and hymns from 137 of them. However, he only ended up utilizing 40 in the completed work. He had discussed adding two more sections after the initial completion. However, these additional sections were never fully realized. Structurally, Stockhausen has separated the work holistically into four regions, and each region has a specified number of centers where 
a certain country or continent serves as the main pillar for listening. Each region is approximately half an hour long, totaling two hours for a complete performance. In the context of history, this piece was groundbreaking simply considering the size. No other electronic work had reached such magnitude at this point in time. Lastly, you can see here that Stockhausen has dedicated each region to a different composer. Region 1 is dedicated to Pierre Boulez. Region 2 is dedicated to Henri Poussier. Region 3 is dedicated to John Cage. And Region 4 is dedicated to Luciano Berrio. In Region 1, which is dedicated to Boulez, it has two centers that focus on the Internationale, which is the left-wing French anthem, and La Marseillaise, the official national anthem of France. Shortwave radio signals, static emissions, Morse code, recordings of bands and orchestras, and even the spoken voice of a croupier are the only handful are only a handful of sounds that occupy this region. Region two, dedicated to the Belgian composer Poussier, consists of four centers: the German national anthem, what Stockhausen calls the subjective center, a collection of African anthems and the Soviet Union anthem. The German center is played, and a quick quote of Hearst Wesselied interrupts the sound near the end, which was known as the unofficial Nazi anthem. The subjective center is the recording of a conversation between Stockhausen and his assistant, David Johnson, while they were working on Hymnen. Part of that conversation included Stockhausen addressing the concern of using the, na of using the Nazi anthem, which might instigate tension or anxiety in listeners, but speaks freely to Johnson that his intention is only to embody a simple passing memory. During the clip, Stockhausen realizes that Johnson was taping the conversation, and you can hear the clicking and replay of the same conversation while Stockhausen and Johnson continue a new conversation over the previous recording. In this way, Stockhausen is demonstrating a layering of time even more than sound. In Region 3, dedicated to John Cage, um, we have three main centers. The first center is a continuation of the Soviet Union anthem from the second region, followed by the USA collage, ending with the third region centered around the Spanish anthem. Now, most of the work consists of found objects or the recording of anthems from around the world, but the Soviet Union anthem was the only anthem in this work to be created purely of electronic sounds. It's also noteworthy that this anthem is stretched out the longest, taking over 10 minutes to play through one iteration of the anthem. The second center, Collage, features the USA anthem, but it's permeated with the anthems of 17 other countries. One hears about two measures of the USA anthem, which is interrupted by a brief quote from another anthem, followed by the USA picking up where it left off. When discussing this center, Stockhausen recalled his time in New York, saying this collage section reminded him of the experiences he had there and how it represents the whole of America, a beautiful melting pot. After the collage, David Johnson's voice is heard saying, we have to go from America to Spain. We have to get across the ocean in just a few seconds. Region four, dedicated to Berrio, contains two double centers. The first double centered is around the Swiss national anthem, and the second revolves around Stockhausen's utopian realm of communion in harmony under plurimon. Now those words are chosen entirely for their hidden meanings. Communion is a combination of him and union. Harmony is a combination of harmonia mundi, the Latin meaning harmony of the world, and plurimon is the so-called leader of this world who combines the ideologies of pluralism and monism. This center contains a collection of electronic sounds that create chords that glissando from one to another. This is Stockhausen's representation of the unification of all anthems. While the other regions use the characteristics of the anthems to create unique soundscapes that highlight individuality, this region seems to focus on a unified peace. Switzerland's fairly consistent historical record of neutrality in world affairs, combined with Stockhausen's symbolic utopian realm, all seem to represent his final message to the listener, the unification of humanity. Now, in listening to the work, there are certain sound sources represented, which I've attempted to classify here. 
the majority of the work is comprised of found sound objects <clears throat> or recordings. This is primarily the collected sound, pardon me. <clears throat> this is primarily the collected sound recordings of national anthems from all over the world. The other main sound profile seems to be from the tape manipulation itself, the splicing, stretching, and morphing of the physical tape and the resulting sounds from these processes. <clears throat> In another tier, I then hear what I'm referring to as original sounds. Electronic sounds created in the studio electronically, noise or sound recordings, which are recorded for the purposes of, of the tape, like clapping or the sound of breathing, and instrumental sounds, including conventional instruments and the voice sung or spoken within the studio. With these sounds, Stockhausen uses a variety of different sound techniques. So my list here <clears throat> is not comprehensive by any means, nor does it imply that these are the only techniques worth noting. However, upon my study of the work, these techniques seem to be some of the main ways Stockhausen manipulates sound. First, one can hear the layering of sound. In this layering, I'm specifically referring to the creation of a kind of sound hierarchy, where simultaneous sound events occur, but the, differentiating of dy uh, the differentiation of dynamic levels creates an order to how the ear perceives the texture. Next, there is overlapping, which is another important element. And what I mean here <clears throat> is the idea of equal sound profiles occurring simultaneously, resulting in this dense web of texture without highlighting any specific part. Lastly, Stockhausen uses juxtaposition to connect different sound fragments side by side into one seamless idea. We hear this technique used in the USA collage in region three, for example. Now, Stockhausen manipulates and distorts the sound in many different ways, but I think there are three primary ways that he manipulates sound in Hymnon. First, he condenses or expands the clip, which shifts the rate and speed of playback, resulting in a tempo change of time or, or time fluctuation. Uh, for example, the Russian anthem is stretched out over 10 minutes, whereas the Spanish anthem is sped up three or four times the normal rate. Pitch bend is another alteration, but Stockhausen is able to change and bend the pitch independent from speed here, whereas primitive devices link speed and pitch elements together. And of course, volume level is adjusted and manipulated throughout as well. Um, now he arranges these elements and manipulations presents its own classification, how he does it, which I'm simply referring to as formal devices. Like we see in Contact, Stockhausen looks to create moments from combining the various techniques to create a distinct moment or event in certain sections. When not looking to create a specific moment or idea, then the resulting material serves the main purpose of transitioning into the next section or providing interest and forward motion to the piece. Lastly, there are moments when Stockhausen will loop the same sound content in a way to halt the musical notion and to break the listener's sense of time and spatial awareness. Now, I've selected a brief clip to include here just to give an example of some of these techniques. The texture and layers are the main elements of construction, so you'll see the different elements I've listed on the table, but they will often happen simultaneously and fuse together seamlessly at times. And a quick side note, I do recommend listening to the piece straight from YouTube, not from this video. Um, but again, this is just to provide a sample. <laughs>
was realized and performed on November 30th, 1967 at the Apostol Gymnasium at the West German radio station. It wasn't until a year later that Stockhausen sat down with the headphones, a keyboard, a metronome, and a stopwatch and dictated the entire two-hour work. In addition to some conventional music notation, he also uses different symbology to represent other sound phenomena, like boxes to mark minute and second timestamps, scribbles to represent shortwave tremolos, uh, and so on. I did find the score immensely useful in reading and listening, but the condensed layering throughout the piece is still uh, really challenging um, when, in terms of understanding the material. Through the realization of Hymnen, Stockhausen was able to innovate new ways of exploring the construction and manipulation of sound, large-scale musical form, and the meaningful incorporation of found material that helped pave the way for future electroacoustic artists and composers. Electronic music up to this point had been widely experimental, and Stockhausen sought to combine the structural devices of the past while even looking ahead to texture music of the future. Symbolically, when we survey the textural density of the work as a whole, we can see the entire piece represents a move, a move from diversity to unity, as the beginning regions are more condensely layered, while the final region is distant and calm, ending with the solitary sound of breathing. Now, considering the context of when Stockhausen completed the work, his focus towards a unified humanity seems clear as cultural revolutions were making huge impacts on the world in the 1960s. Having grown up in an area heavily influenced by the Nazis and living through the Vietnam and Cold Wars, Stockhausen felt strongly about finding a way to unify people through the medium of electronic music. And Hymnen serves as a powerful example of how composers sought to use electroacoustic music, not just as an experiment, but to deliver profound messages in a period of intense culture change.